Andrea. And now we're going to have Alexis Maldonado, who's going to speak to us about the Cove Santuario in the east coast of Yucatan. Alexis is an archaeologist. He's doing his doctorate in the Department of Prehistorian Archaeology at the University of Granada. Right, uh, good afternoon to you all. First of all, I'd like to say say thanks to the org for the organization of this uh, meeting and for allowing me to be here to give this speech. Um, the topic which I'm going to speak about, and I have forgotten to uh, put on the screen, Sorry about this. So I'm going to speak here about the it's a study which has got a long way to go, academically speaking. As far as Mexican archaeology is concerned, the Maya, Maya next, uh, particularly, I'm talking about the Cuando Santuario, the Holy Caves on the Oriental coast of Yucatan. First of all, I'd just like to number the aims that we were we had when we carried out this project. We'd just like to highlight the benefits of using a geographic information system, the SIG, and especially GV-SIG, when uh, managing information which is provided by archaeology. Secondly, I'd like to analyze the possible singularities were in, in specific examples, which later on I'm going to talk about, and which they have. And compared with the other uh, Yucatan cave, uh, caves. And then we'd like to compare the results within a framework, much more global framework, um, which is in the geographical, uh, the Yucatan Peninsula, and also for the Mayan pre-Hispanic culture. Right, as we've seen during all these speeches, which, you know, we've been, which we have seen this morning, the application of the SIG, and especially the GV SIG, it's a very beneficial um, tool in lots and lots of different disciplines, whether it's architecture, forestry, engineering, IT. In the case of archaeology, it's an exception, not an exception, rather it's GVSIG becomes a tool for us which is very, very useful when, when opening up new possible studies. Um, GVSIG allows us to use a uh, web free, which allows us to manage information, geographic information and alphanumeric, and bring, bring them together and to represent them, to show them, to display them in a very visual way. Um, it also enables us, uh, it means that the field work in archaeology and, the st and studying it um, is a lot easier to perform. Now, before going into depth, um, I think I should, we should. Um, find out what we're talking about geographically and culturally. As far as geographically we're speaking, um, let's to go to Central America, in specific to the peninsula, the Yucatan Peninsula, which houses the different Mexican, the Campeche, Quintana Roo, and Yucatan, together with another part of a fourth, which is Chiapas, and part of Guatemala also, and Belize. Um, now let's take a look um, specifically at this point here, right, on the eastern side of the peninsula. Um, however, geographically speaking, the Yucatan Peninsula could adapt to, um, to, the, to the framework of our study. Um, also, Mayab, as the Mayans were called in the past, in the antiquity. We've got, of course, we've got the tension we would occupy here. What I mentioned, not only what I mentioned before, the, about the state of Mexico, of Tabasco also, it includes, that also includes El Salvador and Honduras as well. In this cultural framework, we have a development, um, a very, very, very fruitful civilization, which were the Mayans um, from the first uh, millennium before Christ until the 17th century after Christ, when the colonial troops from Spain. Uh, eventually subdued any resistance which was left from the Mayans. In fact, nowadays, there are also some subterfuges left um, uh, which are still remain um, in communities there. Within the geographic and cultural framework, the Corsica phenomena is extremely common due to the the uh, Caliza, the limestone um, form, we have reliefs like the quay, like the caves. 
These are typically um, uh, and commonly seen in this uh, region. Um, much more, we could say, as we move towards the north, as we move towards the north, the phenomenon, the phenomena becomes becomes bigger. Uh, however, within this um, different formations which exist in Yucatan, we are going to focus today on some particular cases which are even unique within the typology of caves they belong to, which is the holy cave, the Cueva Santuario, which are unique in Yucatan, and which are characterized mainly by their presence inside of our Tortrano. We're talking about a table cave. Uh, we're talking about Sinenha, Ascaret, Nakan, San Francisco, Pitachen, Chelva, Tancab, and Mu Muil, which are all in the east coast of Mexico. So these caves have got certain features. We're taught, if we start off with the absence inside of um, exploitable raw materials, water, um, aluminium, silicates, which are used in construction of Kamkaf, which are the type of material which is used to create ceramics. We also have inside this cave, normally, we have uh, rupestry uh, art. The main characteristic here of these particular types is that they're sighting, they're sighting their location near to the pre-Hispanic Mayan uh, center, which we can see in the uh, uh, Cozumel Island, Isla Cozumel, which is about 10 kilometers or 50 from San Havasio. We find the San Francisco Quave and Pitachen Quaves, and without a doubt, which makes it unique here, is its closeness to the sea. The amount of uh, water, if we're talking about San Francisco and Peter Chen, we're at not only three kilometers away. And for the other rest of the examples, we'll never be beyond five kilometers from the uh, sea. Um, here we also have the table uh, cave. And the, um, right, the water itself for the Mayans was an element, a religious element and some bellow, which was had great importance when they presented together with the cave, which is another element, uh, never an important element, which symbolized the origin of of the so of societies. But they had a binomial which was created, which was very important. And we also have to take into account that the, war, that the sea became an area of communications, a way to communicate, uh, very, very efficient, very quick, relatively, uh, relatively safe. And all of this makes us think that um, that these examples of caves could have been could have been for uh, p um, for pilgrims in the past, and we took at the Yucatan Quave and the Natolig Quave, where James Brady and a team of North American um, have managed to um, to highlight that here there was indeed um, a lot of pilgrimage uh, which happened in this area. And because it's close to the sea, and also as the archaeological register shows that there was activities related to what religious activities and symbolic activities, it gets more and more important here, which means that we've drawn, come to the conclusion that firstly, that the information, geographic information system, especially the GV SIG, uh, become an extremely useful tool for uh, archaeology, archaeologists in general, and especially for uh, landscape archaeology. These examples which we've just seen about the Cueva Santuari, the Holy Caves, and the other caves which we've mentioned, they would seem a very, very strange bird, very rara avis and within the general um, framework. We've got an analytical case in which I would like to um, everybody to go a little bit more into depth in the future. How, however, uh, despite these specific uh, examples with differ differentiating characteristics. It means we shouldn't modify how we take a look at the Yucatan Mayan quaves, mainly as something domestic, economic, and mm, not related to a religious conception, let's say. And really, that's all I would like to say. Thank you very, very much for your attention.